All right, welcome back. It's still The Breakfast on PLUS TV Africa. On this particular segment, we will be focusing on health specifically. Right now, we're looking at the COVID-19 new variants, the Omicron, and there are several issues right now making the rounds. Well, the World Health Organization tagging it as um, a virus of concern. And the uh, Omicron uh, variant, uh, according to the NCDC, is not yet in Nigeria. But Canada said uh, some travelers from Nigeria, you know, actually, you know, were found uh, was, uh, you know, that particular variant. We have joining us this moment to look at all of these issues and uh, what we need to do to protect ourselves more in Nigeria. Uh, Dr. Neso Chi Okeke Iwoke, she is a health expert. Many thanks for joining us on The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa, Doctor. Thanks for having me this morning. Yeah, yeah, our pleasure. So let's just start, uh, you know, just to do a bit of an um, education for Nigerians who may not be so aware about this particular virus, the Omicron, you know, the WHO has tagged it as a virus of concern. What should we uh, be worried about? What are we expected to know as Nigerians? So when we're talking about any um, uh, virus that's a variant of concern, what basically has happened is that there's been a change to the genetic code of the virus, um, essentially a mutation of sorts. The more mutations that occur in the viral genome, it allows the virus the potential to basically cause more harm to the human body. The reason it is deemed um, a variant of, of concern is because it has the potential to be more transmissible, uh, more virulent, and potentially it could evade the efficacy of the vaccinations that we have in place. So with the Omicron variant that we um, are seeing emerging at this point, there's still a lot that we don't know about it. And there's still more studies to be done to determine how virulent this um, new variant can actually be. It could potentially pose a serious global threat, but we don't know the extent of that at this point in time. So I think that's why we kind of see um, the, all the buzz about this variant, because if it does do the uh, potential amount of damage due to the amount of mutations it has, it can really cause problems worldwide in the global community in this fight against the pandemic. Okay, um, let's also talk about, um, because we're still trying to understand what the Omicron is all about, what's the difference between the Omicron variant and other COVID-19 infection? Okay, so it is still a COVID-19 infection, but as stated before, it's called a variant because over time, throughout the course of this pandemic, the actual virus has undergone these changes, these mutations. As long as the virus is um, spreading in the community and thriving, it gives it the opportunity to change some of its genetic code, meaning that there could be a change in some of the coding of the virus that can cause various um, changes and it can make the virus potentially more transmissible. So when we're talking about um, Omicron variant in particular, why there's so much concern, because so far the preliminary data has showed us that there um, is up to almost 50 mutations on this um, uh, new variant, all right? One of the uh, areas of the actual virus is what we call the spike protein. Spike protein, protein is usually what the vaccines target to try to help one build up um, immunity against COVID-19. So what the preliminary data is showing us, there is an abundance of these um, changes, these mutations to this spike protein that could potentially cause problems, many problems. So Dr. Um, um, Okeke Bukwe, if we got you correctly, so over time we should expect to see another set of um, variants of this particular um, COVID-19? So that's the main um, behavior of viruses. Virus behavior lets us know that over time, if we do not contain any kind of virus, it has the potential to mutate and change as it replicates. If we were able to get to a point um, whereby we had uh, herd immunity, um, it would really give us, um, it wouldn't give the virus an opportunity to really thrive and change and mutate. As long as we do not contain the COVID-19 pandemic and the spread 
of the virus, as long as the virus continues to thrive, it always gives it an opportunity to mutate. It gives it an opportunity to change. Anytime the virus mutates and changes, there is always a possibility to have another form of, of variant. So with Omicron that's going on right now, it might not be the last variant of concern that we're gonna see because we have yet to contain this pandemic. So there's always a chance and a possibility for mutations to continuously occur and really affect the human body when one is exposed to such a variant. Okay, so, so let's also, you know, probe for that. Do you know if uh, the Omicron variant is transmissible, uh, you know, just like you have with other um, COVID infection? Yeah, so it's very likely that it is transmissible, but it's the extent of the transmissibility that is still um, needed to be determined at this point. Um, anytime there's a variant of concern, it's concerning because it's usually more transmissible than other forms of the um, of the virus. It's typically more virulent, meaning that um, it has a higher uh, load of virus that can really um, affect the body deleteriously. And it's easier to evade certain public health measures um, that we have in place, like vaccination. So yes, there is going to be a level of high transmissibility, but we don't know how high that level of transmissibility is going to be at this um, time with Omicron. Um, right now, we're in the land of the unknown. There are so many studies and um, research that still needs to be done, and only time will tell how, how this um, variant is really going to affect the population. All right. well, but but ju just before you coming now, you know, some researchers are already saying that, yes, we know that the, the virus was... Um, dictated in South Africa, Botswana, on the 11th of November. But you already have, um, you know, experts at, on top of their game, and some persons are saying that they are concerned with the modeling showing that the spread could be five times, you know, uh, the, the increase. I mean, the rate could be uh, five times of that of the 2020 COVID. That's the Del Delta variant. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Do you think it's something we can go by? I mean, that's def it's definitely a possibility, but at this point and at this stage, we cannot say definitively um, how damaging this, uh, this strain is going to be. Um, there's still too much research that's left um, at this point up in the air that we don't have that data and that information to really make that call. The real concern is the amount of mutations. When you have this level of mutation for any virus, that's always concerning. It puts us on edge thinking that this really can be um, an issue in regards to um, infection rates, reinfection rate for those that are vaccinated. The more, um, the more of these changes and mutations that occur on, any, um, on this variant, it gives it an opportunity to really cause issues, more infection, uh, more transmissibility, and just more uh, virulence of the virus. All right, uh, let's try and localize it now and bring it to Nigeria. Let's um, talk about some of the, uh, you know, public health um, concerns uh, regarding our, um, our challenges as a country. You know, what are the major concerns for us right now? We still have um, issues of uh, most Nigerians not being vaccinated and uh, now there's um, another variant that is really very transmissible. What should we be looking at? What should we be putting in place at this particular time? So the major concern at this point is the very low rate of vaccination um, in Nigeria. Vaccination rates are very low, less than 5% of uh, Nigerians are fully vaccinated at this point. So the goal really is to try to get as much of the population vaccinated. Vaccinations are really the only way out of this pandemic. So if we have this low vaccination rate, and we have a potentially highly transmissible, more virulent um, variant that is that is potentially going to be out there, um, it can really cause some serious problems on uh, the African continent, on um, in Nigeria in general, if this becomes a, a variant that really begins to reach Nigeria and spread throughout the population. The major concern right now 
is really um, vaccine equity. If we do have enough of the vaccines available in Nigeria, how do we get it to most of the um, population? We generally have um, an issue with Nigeria when we talk about the healthcare sector um, in regards to access, access to good healthcare. If we did want every Nigerian to be potentially vaccinated against COVID-19, do they know where to go to get this vaccination? Um, if it is available to them, do they have a proper education to understand why and the importance of why vaccines are actually necessary during this pandemic? No, I mean, I recently, oh, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. Go ahead. I'll I was going to say, I recently um, arrived in um, Lagos, and a lot of people that I have been speaking to and contact with that are not vaccinated, a lot of them have not had that um, patient education to let them know why vaccines are actually fundamentally important at this point and stage of the pandemic. I think many people need to really understand um, the benefit the benefits that vaccination affords one in regards to lowering the uh, rate of death if uh, potentially exposed to uh, the virus, lowering the rate of hospitalization and severe illness. Um, there's a lot of misinformation that um, tends to be spread about this um, vaccine that makes some people quite hesitant about moving forward with vaccinations. Um, I had a conversation with somebody recently upon my landing in Lagos, and they were telling me, you know, COVID-19, it's only a problem um, in the Western world. It's only a problem in America where you live. And everyone needs to realize that this is a global issue. This is a serious illness that has the potential to cause severe illness and severe death if you don't have that potential protection. The only protection that we really have at this point really are the vaccinations. But just but how, sure. just how, sorry mm -hmm. if I have to vote in, but just what do we know as regards um, this vaccination, uh, what with this new Omicron, talking about protection, just how effective are these, uh, you know, vaccines, you know, uh, to these uh, Omicron um, variant. Okay, so, but just uh, you also chipping to that particular question because, I mean, it's the same line of thought. Now, we mm. also have arguments saying that the G20 has failed to vaccinate Africa, and this is where we are. Of course, Niger is part of Africa. Now, the, you have said that this virus keep mutating, and the fact that we're talking about mutation, they become stronger, you know, they, they, have, you, they have different characteristics, they, they, they become something else. So what's the potency of saying that the vaccines that we have right now can mitigate against them? So the vaccines that we have and the research that has been done, it's really to help protect against the um, various um, uh, strains of COVID-19 that we've seen throughout the course of the pandemic. Are the vaccines that we have available right now going to help protect against um, the Omicron variant? Time, only time will tell. There's still too many unknowns and we don't know the level of protection um, that the vaccines that we currently have available globally would help us in protecting against um, the Omicron variant. But with that said, we want to protect ourselves with what we do have available. We want to try to protect ourselves against um, COVID-19, other COVID-19 variants in general, and hopefully get to a point whereby we understand more about Omicron. And if there needs to be some adjustments in any of the vaccines that we have available, then um, researchers would do the needful to uh, determine if they can um, create a formulation of the vaccine that would cover for Omicron if it is found to be that it is such a variant that is evading vaccinations that we currently have. All right. Uh, the youth tide is just around the corner, you know, with most um, nations, including the United Nations and some, you know, European and South Asian um, or Southeast Asian countries, you know, imposing travel bans. Uh, should Nigeria be looking along that di direction? And uh, just what more can we do to protect ourselves, you know, vis-a-vis -vis people coming in and leaving Nigeria? So, I mean, a lot of these um, travel bans that are going on right now, um, they're a bit premature and they tend to be um, somewhat 
um, ineffective. At this point, it gives a false sense of protection and an illusion that this is kind of um, helping us avoid uh, the spread by having uh, any kind of travel ban in place. We have to look at the fundamentals of um, where we've been in the pandemic over the past year and nine months plus. Um, basic things that we need to be concerned about, especially with the holiday season upon us, people are going to be gathered in um, crowds and a lot of gatherings. We need to make sure that most people stick to the basics in regards to um, proper hand hygiene, mask wearing, the basics that help protect them against the spread of viruses, but more so, um, getting back to it, the vaccination situation. We just need to essentially get more people in the community vaccinated against COVID-19 to help curb the spread. All right, should the travel uh, bans? Yeah. Okay, so, so uh, should... Okay, so, so my question now is, uh, just as we're asking for measures, how can we, what are the basic things we need to do to ensure that we reduce the spread of this virus across board? Um, some countries are already talking booster shots. And mm -hmm. for us, we know that as Nigerians, we're still grappling with having uh, people getting the vaccination, getting the first dose and not talking about, you know, the second dose. Uh, w w do you think that, you know, Africa should be considering booster shots at this point in time? Um, I think that's um, definitely a uh, consideration. Um, I can tell you from my personal experience, I've had um, my booster shot. And why is that so key and, that, and why is that important? Because after one has been fully um, vaccinated, some of the data has shown over time, um, some of that protection that you have from being fully vaccinated, it kind of wanes over time. So you want that booster shot to give you that extra level of protection after the um, effect of your initial um, vaccination kind of wanes off with time. So essentially, I think boosters are definitely a consideration um, in Nigeria, but we have to talk about getting the population even initially vaccinated, make sure that um, people get their first dose of the vaccine before we even um, fast forward and jump the gun to talk about boosters. But definitely that is going to be a consideration when we start getting more and more of the Nigerian population um, vaccinated. There's going to come a point whereby there would be a need likely for uh, booster shots. All right, Dr. Um, Okeke Ibokwe, uh, are you concerned about um, the hinterland specifically uh, uh, getting um, access to vaccination here in Nigeria? Because over time, you know, there is still this, uh, you know, vaccine hesitancy across board, in, you know, here on the, the main cities. Now, with concerns of, uh, you know, insecurity and uh, most health workers are not wanting to go down to the hinterlands, what should we be focusing on? How can we, you know, get there to ensure that everyone one, no matter where they are, gets at least one or two shots of um, these vaccines? So I think it um, really comes down to kind of the infrastructure of um, healthcare um, in Nigeria. We really need to make sure that we have um, regulatory and government bodies that are actually focusing on having us have this um, access to more vaccinations in the country. We need to make sure that we actually have um, certain, um, let's put it this way, certain level of uh, education for the entire population to let them know why a lot of these vaccines are important. Um, we need to just have a plan of action in place to um, make sure that we have these vaccines available, we have to consider if it is a matter of even trying to produce and manufacture some of these vaccines um, on the African continent in Nigeria to ensure that we have the availability for all Nigerians to have um, a vaccination uh, available for them. Campaigns need to be available to really educate as well because it's one thing to get to a point whereby we do have adequate amounts of vaccine for every Nigerian, but will everyone really be open to getting the vaccination? Will everyone really understand the importance of uh, vaccination? So campaigns focusing on educating about um, vaccinations, about the 
risks of COVID-19. That's extremely important at this time. Um, but really, I think um, we need to get to a point whereby the issues that have always been longstanding in Nigeria about access to good health care and access to resources, um, things need to pretty much change. And I think it starts with really um, a change in the infrastructure of the health care system here in Nigeria. Okay, so let's talk more about, you know, what to expect with the variant, uh, that's the Omicron variant. Uh, are there symptoms, just like you have with other ailments? Should, what are symptoms? Do we know of any symptoms? Okay, so when we're talking about COVID-19 in general, we do understand when we do know that it is um, a respiratory illness. In regards to the symptoms of um, the Omicron variant, there are so few cases that we have the case studies on to determine if the um, symptomology, if it's going to be any different from various variants like Delta and various strains that we've um, seen um, globally at this point. But in regards to just general symptoms to be um, aware of, you want to be aware of any um, changes in respiratory status. If you're having issues with um, cough, difficulty uh, breathing, shortness of breath, issues with fever, essentially this is still the COVID-19 um, virus, but it's just a variant. So there could be potential changes to the um, symptom profile that we see, but again, it's still too early in um, the information we have about Omicron to know if there are specific symptoms that are super specific to the strain. Okay, so there are also concerns. I mean, I, I know that, uh, you know, for the much that we have had this conversation, you have really uh, been on the fact that we need to be vaccinated. Uh, more people need to be vaccinated. But we mm. also have cases where persons have been vaccinated. And um, it doesn't really stop the fact that they still get to contract the virus. And in, mo in most cases, we've actually recorded uh, deaths of some persons. So uh, how do you explain all of this uh, vaccine, vaccination? Is it really the solution to, you know, stopping this virus or ending it? So, yeah, vaccination is vaccinations are still um, the solution. Um, I think what you're alluding to um, and what you describe are what we call breakthrough infections, meaning when one is fully vaccinated, they've still um, had issues with um, COVID-19 exposure and um, some level of illness. What we know about vaccinations, no vaccine is going to be 100% effective, okay? And we do know with time, when you are fully vaccinated, some of that immunity and the protection that you get it's going to wane over time. So I think it goes back to what we were talking about, the need for boosters to really give you um, that kind of robust effect to build up that immunity that you've gained from the initial set of vaccinations that were um, received. There's always a potential for reinfection. Um, but what we do know in regards to vaccinations, if you have somebody who has been vaccinated against COVID-19 versus somebody who has been unvaccinated against COVID-19 and both individuals are exposed to this virus, chances are the individual who was unvaccinated, they have a high likelihood of having more severe illness, more um, issues with potential hospitalization and a higher chance of death from the uh, virus as compared to that individual who was vaccinated. So the benefits of vaccination um, are, are truly um, beneficial to all those that actually move forward with their vaccine. If you are unvaccinated at this point, um, basically the virus is really looking for you as a host to really do its damage. So it is to your benefit to get the amount of protection or to get the potential protection um, against having severe illness from COVID-19. Okay, I like the way you captured it when you said that the virus is actually looking for you. You know, but uh, let's talk about um, the vaccination still. And uh, you mentioned that uh, the likelihood that um, it could um, wane over time. Can, can we talk about like a window period? Um, how soon uh, do you get to get um, uh, a booster shot when you've done your first uh, um, vaccination, the second, and uh, you know there is a window that it might, uh, you know, 
you might stand a chance of um, getting infected. Just how soon can you um, get um, a booster shot? Okay, so if we're talking about um, some of the mRNA-based uh, vaccinations, so for example, Moderna, that was the uh, vaccination that I received. After being fully vaccinated, some of the data showed that after a six-month period post um, vaccination, being fully vaccinated, getting the full set of um, the two doses, after that six-month window, studies show that there is that waning of the protection, that waning of immunity. So after that six month mark, um, those that did receive their vaccinations, they are eligible to move forward with a booster. So you don't have that full protection, that robust amount of protection as you had initially um, over a period of time. So after several months, um, it will be likely that one would need to have the booster to help with protection. So it's usually around uh, the six month window with the mRNA uh, based vaccinations um, to really give you the opportunity to get the booster, to give you that um, help and that um, kind of boost with the immune protection. All right, now with the new um, Omicron variant, uh, are there specific concerns, uh, if any, that we know of for the elderly, for the infants? Um, so in regards to any kind of variant, that we're talking about when you have a high level of mutation and you have a high level of transmissibility and potentially um, high level of um, virulence from um, any of these variants, we are always concerned, obviously, about the elderly population. We are always concerned about the immunocompromised. Why is that? Because as everyone gets older and those who have chronic medical conditions, um, those that are immunocompromised with issues like um, um, certain kind of cancers with chronic conditions uh, like uh, diabetes, high blood pressure, um, just all types of chronic medical problems. It increases your risk of um, how the virus can actually target the body, your level, of immunity is already lower than the average normal healthy individual. So if you are elderly or immunocompromised, we are going to be more concerned about um, exposure to the Omicron variant. We are going to be um, concerned about exposure to any of the variants um, really in the immunocompromised and elderly population. All right, so uh, l l let's quickly share your thought. Do you think that there's a possibility, of course, the health authorities in Nigeria are saying that uh, we do not have the Omicron virus yet uh, or the variant right now in the country, but we also have reports from Canada saying that some Nigerians who traveled you know, across have been dictated with the virus. Is that a possibility that we do have the variant in Nigeria? I mean, it is, it is always um, a possibility, and again, Time will tell if we're seeing um, the cases that are popping up in the uh, global community in various countries already. It's only a matter of time um, until we actually get a confirmed case of the variant in Nigeria. So the issue is that we might have not done the exact sampling. It might be just uh, staring at us in the face and uh, we don't know yet. It's a possibility. It's a very high possibility. Um, in a matter of time, and this is just um, my speculation in regards to the way um, these viruses, these mutations, these um, variants actually work and operate, when you kind of see this, um, uh, these cases and these uh, surges in various areas um, globally, worldwide, in a country as heavily populated as Nigeria, it's very likely there's a potential unidentified case already, but we need the data. We need the confirmation. It's too soon to say that it's already here without actually having the confirmed case. But in, in some time, I would uh, suspect that we would have um, a confirmed case um, forthcoming. All right, uh, Dr. Um, Igbo, um, Okeke Igbokwe, uh, just before we let you go, maybe just sort of, sort of um, a recap for Nigerians uh, who may still be worried. Um, how would you allay their fears? So in regards to the variant, I would say this is not a time to really panic, but it's a time to really 
um, educate yourself about the benefits of vaccination. Um, it's a time to really um, have that understanding and that discussion um, with a healthcare provider that you actually trust to discuss why it is important to move forward with your vaccination. I think it's a time to really um, remove some of the uh, misinformation that is out there from, um, from our minds. I think it's an opportunity to really understand how um, the vaccines that are available, if they are available to you, how important and how necessary it is to move forward with the, uh, with the vaccination to help give you the protection amidst um, this pandemic. The pandemic is not over yet. I think with Omicron, it's an eye opener to let us know that, to let us know that this um, pandemic is still um, amongst us all and we need to do what we can as best as possible to protect ourselves against this. So I think it's really a call to action at this point um, to see what can be done for us to really protect um, our health throughout the course of this pandemic. All right, thank you very much. Uh, we have been speaking with Dr. Niso Chiokeke Iwokwe, a health expert, and uh, she has uh, done a whole lot of uh, you know, education for us Nigerians. We do appreciate um, your time. Thank you for having me on this morning. It is our pleasure. We'll take a quick break, and when we return, we'll be focusing on nation building on the show this morning. Do join us again. <laughs>